Toyota Land Cruiser Prado versus Mitsubishi Pajero Sport. It's not just a comparative test drive, it's a rematch, because we have already compared these two vehicles several years ago, but a lot has changed since then. The design of Toyota Land Cruiser Prado was updated several years ago, but still this vehicle looks very modern and up-to-date. The car looks proportionally enough, quite massive and I would say a bit scary. When talking about Mitsubishi Pajero Sport we have a new front part. The headlight was uplifted as well as the additional light. Now the vehicle has a 700 mm weight in depth and you will not even dirty your headlighting. We have a full LED light, we have a new bumper and we have a new radiator grille here. Surely the front side of the vehicle looks much better and even more massive, I would say. This car can look nice when you look from the front as well as from three-quarters angle. While Land Cruiser Prado looks proportional, I can't say the same when I look at Mitsubishi Pajero Sport, especially regarding its silhouette. In my opinion, neither Prado nor Pajero Sport are not the pieces of automobile design art. Of course, if you don't mean that design equals to a couple of headlamps and one and a half meter of plastic covered with chrome that moves from one part of the car to another, from the current car generation to the new one, when judging the design of these two vehicles, I kept on asking myself, where did the masters who created such pieces of art like Mitsubishi 3000 GT, Mitsubishi Galant V? R4, Lancer Evolution or Pajero Pinin disappeared. I have a similar question for Toyota to ask. You have created a Toyota 2000 GT for James Bond. You have created Supra for usual sports car lovers as well as Toyota Century. Although my video editor is asking to delete this model from the list. He says that Toyota Century looks like a Volvo that was fine-tuned by a rasp. Ok, no more hate speeches from my side. Now I want to hear from you, which Mitsubishi and Toyota models are you impressed by mostly? Ok, now let's move to the rear end of the car. It has chopped tail lights, but these rear parking lights are still very much recognizable. We have a facelifted rear bumper, but still it's a well-known and popular Pajero in our country. We start the braking from a speed of 60 km per hour. The best result of Prado is 12 meters 13 centimeters. The worst braking result is 12 meters 57 centimeters. The average result of three rounds is 12 meters 41 centimeter. To be honest, it's quite a good result, considering the winter tires on dry asphalt. The best braking result of Pajero Sport is 12 meters 21 centimeters. The worst result is 12 meters. 97 centimeters. The average result of the three rounds is 12 meters and 60 centimeters. So, the difference between the slowdown of Toyota and Mitsubishi is just 19 centimeters. Unless it's 19 centimeters of somebody's Mercedes S Class. If you are a left-handed driver that is forced to change a Porsche car to a cheaper one, then the Pajero Sport is a perfect option for you, because the start-stop button that activates the car is located here, on the left side of the wheel, just exactly as in a Porsche. This fact adds a touch of premium for those who understand it. On the other hand, it adds a lot of questions for the others that don't, especially considering the fact that this button is covered by the wheel as well as the turn signal lever. But in general, it's an interesting and unusual solution. 
We have already discussed the size of the Pajero Sport. It's more narrow than Prado. The inside part of the vehicle tightly covers you, so you might get an illusion that you're inside of the sports car. Doubtful if it's an important option of a brutal off-roader. But I must admit that I don't feel any inconvenience driving this vehicle. Although, sometimes I'm afraid I will hit a ceiling with my head, but it's never happening because of the special stamping on the roof. By the way, the front pillars are quite sloping, and this adds the good aerodynamics to the car, but it may be not too convenient for a tall driver. Although, if you are 1 meter 90 centimeters just like me, you would not have any problems. But if you are taller, then it may be an issue. By the way, now I'm checking the electrical adjustments. I can lift the chair up and hit the ceiling, and it's no surprise in a Japanese car. But I feel that three or or four centimeters are missing when I'm trying to bring the chair down, then it would be just perfect. The other perfect thing in a new facelifted Pajero Sport is a dashboard. Hallelujah! Seems like those bottomless warehouses with analog appliances have finally burned out somewhere in Japan. Or maybe they were washed out with a tsunami. Because I just don't believe my eyes when I look at this huge graphic colorful display. Moreover, I can even change its design and functionality. It's really great and indeed quite unexpected from the Japanese guys, and Mitsubishi guys especially, because they have not presented any new innovations for the past 50 years. Okay, it was a joke, just the past 20 years. That's why this dashboard is just great, it's so innovative and up-to-date, so thanks a lot for that. I can say the same about the new multimedia system. It's not that innovative as the dashboard, but still, it's much better than it used to be. On the other hand, I don't find any physical button to adjust the volume, and it's really not convenient at all. The necessity to push the electrical button is really irrigating me. Of course, there are physical buttons on the steering wheel, but I have to turn all the system off just to turn the sound off. It doesn't work in a different way and I don't like it at all. Although, coming back to the optionality, this multimedia system offers both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay system. If I'm not mistaken, we have a new design of the separate zone climate control system, but again, this stuff that I have to manually turn looks so old-style and outdated, like from the old times. To summarize, I divide the design options of Pajero Sport to those that I cannot accept and to those that I really like a lot. For instance, it's quite obvious that the design of this multimedia steering wheel is much more interesting than the one of Toyota Land Cruiser Prado. At the same time, these seat heating buttons come from the Japanese warehouses that keep on producing exactly the same type of buttons are still working. Seems like the agreements are still valid, because Mitsubishi keeps on installing these old-fashioned buttons to the newest generation of the vehicles. If we go on with the central dashboard overview, we have to mention that the two USB charge points and one HDMI socket here. In addition, we have a fancy BMW iDrive type pack that changes the modes of transmission and the all-wheel drive system. Talking about optionality, we have an electrical handbrake, as well as active cruise control and 360 degrees overview camera. All the materials used are very nice. So I must admit that Mitsubishi Pajero Sport, after the facelift, looks much more premium like than before. I do like the leather covers on the central console. When you move your leg, you feel really comfortable and don't face any inconvenience. This means that engineers and designers were carefully considering the smallest details and it's nice. But there are funny moments as well. 
for instance, in Toyota Land Cruiser Prado, you can shift the transmission to the sports mode, while there are no steering wheel pedal shifters. Here you don't have any sport mode, but you have the pedal shifters, from the same warehouse, by the way. The chairs are comfortable, the electric adjustments are just great, I don't have what to complain about. You can drive really far away in these chairs. I used to drive 1000 or even 1200 kilometers with a previous generation Pajero Sport and I didn't have any single problem with my back. Coming back to the dashboard, we can say that it's digital, colorful, with good graphics. It's no longer a rock painting on the Japanese primitivist painters. But the picture quality itself is still not even close to 4K, it's rather SVHS. But you know, I don't blame Japanese guys for that. It was not so long ago when they finally closed the last videotape production factory. Although Japan is well known for high-tech, still there are a lot of conservative solutions and if something is really working well, they tend to rely on these old-style solutions, doubtful about the new ones. This leads to undoubtful Japanese reliability, but at the same time the Japanese automotive industry is seriously lagging behind the German one, which offers the greatest innovative solutions, although they are all incredibly expensive. We're testing both vehicles with a slalom test. They both are predictively cranked, but at the same time there is a feeling that Toyota has a slightly sharper steering, while Pajero Sport reacts with a small delay. At the same time, it was not clear till the very end, who is the leader in this test. So the final result is as follows. Toyota finishes with 13.12 seconds, Mitsubishi with 13.32. At the same time, when we overlay one video to another, we can see that both vehicles roll similarly and both stay on the track. Yet Land Cruiser Prado makes this a little bit better. Both competitors are at maximum specifications. The one thing is that Toyota Land Cruiser Prado starts at the point where Mitsubishi Pajero Sport actually ends. For example, Toyota has the air suspension, which can be height adjustable. It also has a crawl control system that allows conquering the off-road in automatic mode. It also has a lot of other fancy systems that Mitsubishi Pajero Sport doesn't have, even in the highest spec. That's why we will concentrate not on the options, but on the characteristics that allow us to compare these two vehicles. Sizes, for instance. It's obvious that Land Cruiser Prado is much roomier. This vehicle is wider. Comparing the quality of materials and interior design, both cars are designed around functionality, reliability and durability. The other thing is that Toyota still has analog indicators on the central console. The multimedia screen is not big enough, the computer graphics is quite poor. But when talking about comfort, I must admit that Toyota paid good attention to the smallest details. There are a lot of physical buttons, they are big enough and correctly located. Except for the one block that is located below the steering wheel, near your right knee. I have a lot of questions about why did they place the camera switching as well as the wheel heating, the car wiper heater and several buttons more at this place. Firstly, the owners of this car will never discover this block easily. Secondly, I truly believe that in such a big vehicle there was enough room to place these buttons at the block with the conditioner or climate control like here in the second row. It would be fine even it's a cascade style. 
In this case, I would discover these buttons much easily. I was laughing when saying that Mitsubishi Pajero Sport is a perfect car for a left-handed driver, because the start-stop button is placed to the left from the steering wheel. In Toyota, I would laugh that this is a perfect car for a knee driver, because my knee hits the start button and only thanks to the leather cover that covers the central console as well, I cannot commit suicide while driving. It also protects my knee from aching when driving for long distances. So, quite a strange and doubtful location of the button, at the same time it's comfortable for pushing it, because you hardly lift your hand to start or stop the engine, you can see it very well. In my opinion, the greatest advantage of Land Cruiser Prado is the driver's seating. Here I feel that I am inside of a mechanism, a part of it, not a horse rider. I don't sit here as high as in Pajero Sport, where I had to adjust the chair and was always scared to hit my head on the off-road, although that never happened. In Land Cruiser I sit quite low, my chest is safely covered with the instrument panel, I feel comfortable, I have a lot of space all around me. No surprise that it's very comfortable and roomy when you sit on the second row seats. There's a plenty of headroom. Now the front seat is adjusted for me, so you can see how spacious the legroom is. In Toyota you can move the second row of seats closer and make the boot space bigger, or you can move them backwards, thus making yourself sit comfortably. There is a folding down armrest. You can also adjust the second row backrest to the very comfortable angle, so you just drive and relax. The interior of Toyota Land Cruiser Prado is definitely wider than the one of Mitsubishi Pajero Sport, we have checked that. Toyota Salon is 7 cm wider than Mitsubishi's. The height from the floor to the roof when seated on the second row of Land Cruiser is 123 cm, while in Pajero Sport it's just 117 cm. Besides, we should mention that at maximum spec of Toyota it has the seat heating and separate climate control. So you have a three-zone climate control, two zones for the front row and one for the second. But we should also remember that the maximum spec is much more expensive than maximum spec of Pajero Sport. It's quite comfortable in the second row of Pajero Sport and my knees are safe thanks to the good knee room. We should mention that here we have a different type of interior construction comparing to Land Cruiser. Here we have a so-called concert seating. This means that the second row is located higher than the first row. And that is exactly why my head is bumping the ceiling right now. Maybe it's because I forgot my concert skull at home and used the regular one, which is not compact enough. Talking about the ceiling, please note that there are special buttons that turn the additional air conditioning and ventilation, especially for the second row passengers. We have leather seats, we have an armrest, we have very nice foldable cup holders at the backrests, and the backrests are nicely adjustable, yet there is no option to move these seats like in Toyota. Of course, you may say that the seats of Toyota are better because you can move them, but Pajero Sport answers with an argument of a quick and easy interior transformation. When folding back seats, you increase the boot size to the unbelievable measures. And if talking about the boots, let's compare the back doors. Mitsubishi Pajero Sport has an electrical tailgate opener and a possibility of opening from the remote controller. 
What will be the answer of Toyota? It doesn't have an electrical tailgate opener because the door opens to the side, but at the same time you can open the window up with a special button, so the boot access can sometimes be even more comfortable. The sizes of our contestants, their weight and ground clearance warn us that the moose test will be tough for them and scary for the driver. By the way, the car weight of Pajero Sport is 2065 kilograms and the ground clearance is 218 millimeters. Land Cruiser is 195 kilograms heavier with the ground clearance of 215 millimeters. Although all these parameters are important, but in this test all depends on the suspension tuning and vehicle stability control system. Mitsubishi starts first and without any problems passes the qualification on the speed of 50 km per hour. At the speed of 55, Pajero Sport seems to look as stable as before, but there are some issues inside indeed. The facelifted Pajero Sport has just passed the ELK test at the speed of 55 km per hour. The vehicle stability control system works really correct. It timely brakes as well as stabilizes the vehicle on its trajectory. But the steering wheel gets stuck. At one moment the steering wheel became really heavy. It's not good situation, because that could be a problem in an extreme situation on the road. Now I've fixed the speed of 60 km per hour and we'll try to pass this test while you'll have a look at what is going on inside of the vehicle when I'm doing this. It seems that 60 km per hour is too much for such a huge frame-based vehicle, but still we'll see. It's fine, the steering wheel bites a little. What is least expected is that the more speed is, the less biting effect is, and the vehicle passes the ELK test easily from the speed of 65 km per hour. But what is the most wonderful is that Pajero Sport passed the test on 70 km per hour. From the first trial, that doesn't happen often even with the passenger vehicles or compact SUVs. Here you are, I've passed the test at 70 km per hour. I will not go further because it's already good enough, while the width of the road for such a big vehicle on high speeds might be not enough. What would Toyota Land Cruiser Prado answer? Although Toyota passes the test from the start, but demonstrates a very strange behavior. Power steering at Toyota faces the same problems as Pajero Sport had. What can I say? Here the steering wheel bites absolutely the same way, so I had to exert the physical efforts to overcome this difficulty. Finally, I managed to pass the 50 km per hour test. It's 50, but the wheel stucks, so it's just a disaster. But with speed increasing, when you need to jump over 60 km per hour and hit 65, all the uncomfortable issues fade away and Land Cruiser confidently replicates Pajero's success and gets the 70 km per hour mark. The vehicle stability control system works just brilliant. I could not expect that it will gently pick me up and slow down the car where needed. No wheel biting ever happened again. So I passed the test with a speed of 70 km per hour with no problems. 
Basically, the two cars passed the Moose test totally differently. At a certain moment, I was absolutely sure that it's much easier when driving Mitsubishi Pajero Sport. But at high speed, Prado proudly proved that the engineers of Toyota eat their bread not in vain, and they do know how to stabilize their car. Respect to you guys, I was pleasantly surprised. Land Cruiser Prado is fairly controllable car, although it's obvious that it's not the lord of the highways. At high speeds you have to control the car weight, at high speeds you need to understand that we have a high center of gravity and all the moves must be done in advance. Although obviously security system will back you up a lot. Basically the acceleration dynamics and dynamics of this car are enough for me up to 120 km per hour. Then everything becomes more problematic, because we no longer have a giant torque. We are left with just 170 horsepower. That is not always enough for such a heavy car, especially with dynamic overtaking up to 100 km per hour. But if suddenly you leave the highway and, for example, find yourself in Kropivnitsky Krivy Rift direction, then there you will understand what the Land Cruiser Prado was created for. It not only easily overcomes the lunar landscapes, it will bring you safe and sound from one blessed city to another with maximum possible comfort. Basically, after our Namibian adventures, it makes no sense persuading you that Prado is a supercar for super tough off-road. But nevertheless, as soon as a lot of our subscribers ask for that, we will gladly do so for you. What differs Pajero from Prado on the off-road? Pajero is a real combat motorboat that planes over all those road pits and holes. Due to the light weight, this car flights over the holes in the road, while Prado flattens the obstacles. And that is the biggest difference between them. Can we say that Mitsubishi is weaker in cross-country ability comparing to Toyota? I'm sure that it's not. Can this car deal with off-road? Yes, it surely can, and it can do so at high speed. I'm personally familiar with Hiroshi Masuoka, who is the Dakar winner, who became a winner in two consecutive years. Myself and my team personally were filming his test drives all over Ukraine when the special off-road routes were constructed for him in six or eight cities in Ukraine. He made test drives with several thousands of Ukrainian car lovers. I saw how the ordinary stock vehicle makes thousands of laps on off-road, on high speed, without any brake, day to day. Despite such hell conditions for two weeks, with no stop, this car was never damaged. It was not changed to another one, and it brought a lot of fun and excitement not only to Masuoka, but to several thousands of Ukrainians. That's why I'm 100% sure in off-road and rally raid capabilities of Pajero Sport. I must admit that if Land Cruiser Prado is not really adapted to high-speed driving on highways, in my firm opinion, Pajero Sport at the same time is the car that is driven like a passenger vehicle. This is not quite a brutal SUV that responds to the command of the driver and steering wheel for half an hour. This is a car that is very difficult to maneuver in the traffic flow. No, on the contrary, Pajero Sport is a car that is surprisingly easy to steer. Pajero Sport is a car 
with a high center of gravity. It is clear that we cannot compare the handling of Pajero Sport with passenger cars, but if we compare Pajero Sport and Land Cruiser Prado, then Pajero Sport is definitely closer to handling of a passenger car than Prado. Suspension is the big advantage of Pajero Sport. It doesn't care about the Ukrainian asphalt off-road. This car will just as easily overcome lunar craters, which are very common on our roads, even on national and international, but at the same time this suspension overcomes small holes and small pits little worse than Land Cruiser Prado does. But here we need not to forget that Land Cruiser Prado on our test is equipped with air suspension and perhaps the Land Cruiser Prado with a spring suspension will work out minor bumps exactly the same way as Pajero Sport. Comparing the noise insulation inside the car, then Prado will crush Pajero Sport because the diesel engine is too noisy here. In general, as soon as you got into the car and pressed the start button, you immediately realize that you have a diesel engine under the hood. Noise isolation in the front is definitely not enough. Everything else corresponds to the high Japanese standards. stated that Mitsubishi Pajero Sport is equipped with a 2.4 turbo diesel engine with no alternative. The output is 181 horsepower and the torsion torque is 430 Nm. According to the paper data, the 8-speed automatic transmission should accelerate the car to 100 km per hour by 12.3 seconds. We will check this parameter as well. Now we'll visit our partner company upstage and check the real horsepower capacity. When measured from the flywheel, Pajero Sport produces 181 horsepower just like on paper and 455 newtons of torque, which is 25 newtons more than stated. When measuring the power from the wheels, the horses dropped to 158 and the torque to 409, which is actually a great result. Land Cruiser has a wider range of engines, but the headliner of sales in Ukraine is a 2.8-liter turbo diesel with 177 horsepower and 450 newtons of torque. Unlike the Pajero Sport, Land Cruiser Prado has a six-speed automatic transmission. Prado is obliged to accelerate in 12.7 seconds to hit 100 km per hour. But what does Prado really shows on the stand? I have an answer to this question. We've got 170 horsepower and 426 newtons of torque from the flywheel, which is very close to the paper data. From the wheels, everything does look not so magical. Here the power dropped just to 120 horsepower and the torque is decreased up to 330 newtons. And here's the right time to move on to measuring the acceleration dynamics. Let me remind you that Mitsubishi, according to the passport data, is gaining up to 100 in 12.3 seconds. In reality, you can count on 12. Prado promises to get to the 100 in 12.7 seconds. But most likely it will be 13.8. At least this is indicated by our race logic. In general, we have drawn a new favorite for races in 402 meters. That is Mitsubishi Pajero Sport, which predictably and reasonably overcomes Land Cruiser around one full body.
For those who are more interested in fuel consumption, Toyota's Passport Urban Cycle is 9.4 liters per 100 kilometers, 6.7 for suburban and 7.7 for combined. On our cruise control at speed of 90 km per hour, we have received 6.3 liters, and with 130 km per hour, the figure was 10.1. In the city, Mitsubishi promises 9.8, 7 liters on highway, and 8 at mixed cycle. In reality, at 90 km per hour, the consumption of Pajero Sport is the same 6.3 liters as Prado's, and at 130 km per hour, it was 9.6. And this is slightly less than Toyota had. And finally, let's talk about the prices. In Ukraine, the cheapest Prado costs about $35,000 today. The most expensive is almost $59,000. But everything depends not only on the specification, but on the engines as well. At the same time, for the version with a petrol 4-liter engine, they start to ask from $36,000. For Pajero Sport, everything starts at about $35,000 and finishes at $36,000 for the top end spec. Let me remind you that there is only one engine available and the transmission can be either 6-speed manual or 8-speed automatic. Comparing our today's test drive with a boxing match, it's obvious that there is no knockout or knockdown. We have to judge by the score and by impression that each car can make on the judges. If talking about my personal opinion, considering all the characteristics and feelings, everything is quite equal. Mitsubishi doesn't surrender to Toyota. But there is one problem here. In Ukraine, considering the respect and recognition, Toyota Land Cruiser Prado is like Mike Tyson, while Pajero Sport is like Alexander Usy. So not the score is needed to beat the rival, but a knockdown. But this is a quite an impossible task, even with a blindfold 50 years old Tyson boxing. At the same time, the chances of Pajero Sport versus Land Cruiser Prado are quite high.